Hey, it's Stuart. It seems that solar is now growing faster than all the other types of green energy. Experts say renewables will make 95% of the increase in global power capacity through 2026. Solar alone will provide more than half of it. Why is that? What does solar have that other energy types don't? Today, I want to talk about the pros and cons of solar energy and look at how solar outdoes other energy types. There are two ways to look at the benefits of solar energy. You can evaluate it from the point of view of an ordinary citizen like you and me. In this case, we would be talking about the conveniences and troubles of having a solar system at home and the profits that it may bring. However, I would like instead to take a look at solar in the global perspective. We'll see how it fares against other types of energy and why humanity should or should not use it. Let's start with the advantages. First, solar energy is considered clean, which means solar panels don't release greenhouse gas emissions when they work. When a household in America switches to solar energy, its average annual carbon footprint drops by 25%. It's not like solar panels don't harm the environment at all, and we'll get back to that later. But the panels themselves are safe for humans, whereas fossil fuel plants have a negative effect on people's health in towns. Panels also make no sound and they are silent, unlike, for example, wind turbines, so living with them is comfortable. Second, solar is a renewable type of energy, much like wind or hydroelectric power. Solar panels use sunlight, which is basically unlimited. It puts solar ahead of fossil fuel plants and nuclear reactors, which rely on the material that is limited. Sunlight is also available basically everywhere. It allows every country to use it without having to rely on fuel supplies from partners which have it. Of course, it makes the most sense to use solar in countries where there's a lot of sunlight. The third advantage that solar energy has is it can be installed almost anywhere. Hydroelectric dams always need some type of water body to function. Geothermal plants can only be installed in the areas near tectonic plate boundaries. Wind turbines work better in the open space and people don't like living next to them. They are loud and they're kind of ugly. Solar panels are flexible in that regard. They can go on the roof of a house, they can be installed on a water body. The only thing panels really don't like is shading. So I guess you wouldn't be able to install them in a forest or a big town with lots of tall buildings. The next thing that's good about solar is its cost. Historically, solar has been very expensive. In 1956, the cost of one watt of solar capacity was $1,825. Even 10 years ago, solar was the most expensive choice for new energy development. A megawatt hour of solar energy came at over $350. Today, you can get it for $20 or cheaper. IEA now claims that solar is the cheapest source of energy in history. Because of its low cost and versatility, anyone can now install solar panels for their home or business. In our new guide, we explain how you can minimize the expenses when going solar and then maximize your profits from it. You can grab this guide for free. Find the link in the description. This is an impressive list of advantages and it does explain why solar has become so trendy and developed so fast. However, it would not be fair to look at only the good things. So let's look at the disadvantages that using solar energy bears. First of all, solar is not completely clean. While solar panels don't release greenhouse gases by themselves, we use toxic chemicals to make them and waste is often dumped into the environment. We also haven't streamlined the process of disposing of old panels yet. Panels are mostly glass, a bit of plastic and some aluminum. They can be recycled, yes, but you only get around $3 per collet from one panel, so nobody really wants to do it. People also say that birds crash into solar panels for some reason. On average, about 100,000 to 150,000 birds die because of solar farms in the US. However, the amount of bird deaths caused by wind turbines is five times higher. Fossil fuel plants kill about 15 to 25 million birds each year through collisions, electrocution, and poisoning. While solar does have environmental concerns, it is a much better option compared to traditional energy solutions. The second problem with solar is the high water footprint. Experts from MIT calculated that people use over 10 billion gallons of water per year for cleaning solar panels around the world. That's enough water for the yearly needs of 2 million people. You also have to filter this water because you don't want anything left on a panel when it dries. Filtering alone makes up about 10% of the operating costs of solar installations. Recently, MIT engineers developed dust magnets, which will hopefully clean panels in the future without water. 
The third disadvantage is that solar panels have relatively low efficiency. Most modern panels convert only about 23% of sunlight they get into electricity. It translates to a high land footprint. It takes a lot of space to build a powerful solar installation. For instance, one megawatt of solar power requires five to 10 acres of land. It's like four to eight American football fields put together. It's still better than wind farms where the turbines have to be spaced far apart to work well. However, nuclear power and gas plants need less space to produce the same amount of power. On the other hand, we often place panels on our roofs which aren't really being used for anything else. Recently, engineers have found a way to install them on water bodies, which is great for countries without a lot of free land. And of course, panels get more and more modern and more efficient year after year. The final most serious problem with solar is the fact that it's a variable source of power, which means it depends on external circumstances. Panels don't work if the sun doesn't shine. That's a big problem because by itself it forces us to shaping our activity around sunlight hours. We sort of solve this problem by adding batteries to solar systems so that we can use stored solar energy whenever we want. But the batteries are expensive and it increases the cost of installations. Solar shares the problem of variability with wind power. Panels are more reliable though. We can use the map of solar irradiance to predict the production of our systems. While clouds are a problem, it's not like panels stop making energy on gloomy days. Some invisible solar radiation still can penetrate the clouds and land on panels. As long as there is daylight, panels keep on working. So that's it. Here's my list of advantages and disadvantages that solar power has and how it compares to other energy types. I hope that you found it useful. If you like this video, come follow us on Instagram and check out our magazine. There is a lot of great info about green energy there. Once again, don't forget about our free guide. It might help you save some money if you decide to install solar. Links are in the description. Hope to see you next time. Bye.